final stop on the road to WrestleMania 37 is tomorrow night, WWE Fastlane 2021, the very last event to be streamed on the WWE Network and the first event to be streamed on Peacock, uh, at least here in the United States. What is going on out there, world? It's your boy Tommy on the spot for Watch Along Wrestling. If it's your first time stumbling across the channel, you want a little more Fastlane feedback or Fastlane content so you jumped on here make sure you leave a big thumbs up and subscribe we're hitting the ground running we got a ton of content up here on the page a little something for everyone so i'd be real excited to have you jump aboard all right so fast lane 2021 is tomorrow and immediately the first thing that comes to my mind is a lot of chatter i've heard from people saying ah oh, this is a lame duck show it's not much in this show the show doesn't mean as much what's the point of this show we got wrestlemania in just three weeks it's ridiculous to have another show but I think, take a minute and sit back and take a look at this card. There's a lot here. Honestly, there's a lot to sink our teeth into when it comes to this show. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, I can't see a, a scenario where this show doesn't at least have a lot of really good action. And as far as these matches not being pretty inconsequential, maybe. Uh, I'll never forget No Way Out 2007, where the main event was John Cena and Shawn Michaels against Batista and, Trip and uh, The Undertaker, because you already had your two main events for WrestleMania set up that year, so you just had kind of a big big uh, tag team match featuring all the WrestleMania main eventers, and ended up being a great match. Now granted, probably not at the time, a lot of people didn't, didn't pay for that pay-per-view because it was a big 35 40 maybe $50 at the time, but with the show tomorrow that's just kind of being added on, I'm not, I don't understand the complaints. And this show is pretty darn kick-ass. Let's Let's talk about this here just for a second. Just, just the match quality here. Let's, let's put the silliness aside. We all know there's some stuff on here that's going to be zany, that's going to be over the top. It's probably not going to be for, you, for your wrestling fan. But also on this show, you've got Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. They have not wrestled each other for six years, and their first encounter back at Fastlane 2000, I think it was 15, was awesome. So those guys, they're back in there, one-on-one, -on -one, going to be great. Maybe they have had a TV match, but this is their first pay-per-view match since Fastlane 2015, in six years. This match is gonna be fantastic. Added intrigue, having Edge involved here. Edge is gonna face the winner at WrestleMania, so I love it, great stuff. You just have, just announced Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. These guys have had a match back at Survivor Series a couple years ago that I thought was awesome, and they're gonna just tear it up. I love it, really great stuff. You also have Ali taking on Matt Riddle. I don't think those guys could possibly have a bad match. From there, you've got Big E taking on a new, a motivated Apollo Crews for the Intercontinental title that I'll get to. I'm excited to talk about that one. That match should be awesome. You also have the intrigue of Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair going for the Women's Tag Team Championship. And I think Nia and Shayna with those two could have a really interesting type match. And on top of that, you have Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. Now, yes, I would have loved if they had gotten a chance to have this match be for a number one contender. Just falls to the wall beating the crap out of one another. Maybe at the end, Drew gets the victory and Sheamus holds his hand up and says he's got his back at WrestleMania. And he's out there going again, in the corner of Drew, going against Lashley with the Hurt Business in his corner, or at least with MVP in his corner. I think that would be it, but it's awesome. It's not what they decided to do. Instead, they gave Drew the, the spot. They announced he's gonna be facing Lashley for the championship at WrestleMania. Just announced it. That was lame. Don't get me wrong. Really lame, if you will. But they had to announce a match or two for WrestleMania with tickets going on. So at least they thought they needed to. Uh, I don't really understand why, because tickets for WrestleMania typically go on sale in November when they don't have any matches announced, but it is what it is. I was into this uh, match the first couple times it's happened, and I think Drew and Sheamus are just going to tear it up. So those are six of the eight matches that I think are going to be incredible. So all in all, I mean, I'd say go into this show with an open mind. Recognize that WWE is probably aware that maybe this show's won just specifically for the hardcores, and so they've given you six matches to really sink your teeth into that I think are really interesting and, and could you add a lot of intrigue. And uh, hey, even the other two matches, maybe from a train wreck standpoint, could be at least an entertaining watch. So with that being said, let's get into it. Let's break down each match, match by match, giving you your winners and your predictions from there. Starting things off with Shane McMahon. Here comes the money, my guy. You know I'm a huge Shane O'Mac fan. He returns to take on Braun Strowman, who I am not a big guy of, so to speak. Uh, but that match is going to be taking place at Fastlane. Originally, I thought they were saving this one for WrestleMania, but instead we're getting it a little early, which to me basically means that you're going to get a lot of plunder, you're going to get a lot of silliness, and I think this match will just simply lead to a rematch at WrestleMania that will probably be either in a cage or a Hell in a Cell or something where Shane can't run away from Braun Strowman. So, or 
somebody else gets involved, some sort of interference. There's going to be a reason, I think, that this match is rematched at WrestleMania, at WrestleMania, and I think it's going to be with some sort of stipulation to keep folks out. So I'm going to actually go with uh, Shane McMahon, either weaseling his way to a victory or Braun by DQ or something, no contest, something to that extent. Don't expect too much from this match, because I think the main match between the two is going to happen at WrestleMania. Moving right along, the one that I think we're all looking forward to, Brandy Orton versus Alexa Bliss. What on earth is going on? What in the name of intergender pro wrestling is going on? Well, a couple things here. Number one, I think this match is, and I don't expect anything from this match. I think this match is simply something that is just going to be a vehicle to reintroduce the theme back into WWE TV and set up his match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania. You know it's coming. Maybe we're not excited about it, but we know that that is the direction for WrestleMania. I mean, hey, I, I think Randy Orton and Fiend is fine. I have no issue with those guys having a crazy match at WrestleMania. Um, I, I prefer if it wasn't a cinematic match, especially with fans back. Hopefully that's not the direction they're going. Uh, that's my big fear is that they'll have fans come back and then do a cinematic match at WrestleMania. So hopefully that's not the way that they go. Uh, but I do expect The Fiend to be reintroduced. Who knows what they're going to do with the two Randy Ortons. But if they ever wanted to do something where they could flip around and change some things around for uh, you know the screen without fans, this is one of their last chances to do so. So uh, expect a lot of hijinks, expect a lot of special effects, and uh, but I would not expect these two to have very much of a match. All right, so let's get into some more of the matches here that uh, I, I think we're, we're, we're all looking forward to. Uh, Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura for, the, for a match here that I think is uh, a great one. I'm really excited to see Shinsuke get a spot here. And what I do think this is leading to, which is pretty surprising to me, is going to be Seth Rollins at WrestleMania against Cesaro. And I think this match will help us to get to that point. Cesaro's been calling out uh, Rollins. Rollins has been denying him, saying he doesn't live up to the hype. He doesn't. He's not worthy of a match with Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Um, I'll be honest, I'm, I, I'm also thinking, I mean, that's going to be a great match, and I think I'll be loving it, and it'll be awesome to see, but I kind of, I, the, the point of a good heel is that he makes sense, and as much as I love Cesaro, his win-loss record over the last couple years, if you're going to be going by that, maybe he doesn't deserve a match at, at with Rollins at WrestleMania, so they've been behind Cesaro in recent months, though, and so I'm excited to see how they get there. I think this tomorrow will be something to kind of get us to that point, but hopefully Nakamura and Rollins could have a bit of a showcase before they do get there. Uh, I do expect that Nakamura will win, but I think it will be due to outside interference from Cesaro. Continuing along, the Intercontinental Championship. This match, I am i don't know which way to go with this, guys. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Big E has been somebody the company's been getting behind. Big E has got, he's got the 24 special. He's someone clearly they see a lot in, and with good reason. He's awesome. But Apollo Crews, and he is somebody who I have not been a fan of since he came to WWE. I, I enjoyed... Uh, a lot of his work before coming to NXT. But ever since he started in uh, Zuha Nation, but ever since he started in, uh, in NXT, I just feel like he's just been, you know, your, your, your clean cut, your happy-go-lucky baby face that just has no character whatsoever, and I have not been a fan. That being said, his brand new character, and I know a lot of people don't love certain aspects of it, and I think that in the beginning, maybe there was some hesitation, but I think he's really done some of his best stuff in this role. And because he's a brand new character, I think Apollo Crews is going to win the Intercontinental title tomorrow. I really do. And uh, I worry that if they don't give him the Intercontinental title, it'll just stunt his growth. That'll be the end of this character. And I don't know where you go with Apollo from there. So I think Apollo has to win the title tomorrow. But I think these guys are going to be motivated to have a great match. Had some good ones in the past. I'm really all in on this one. This match might be the one I'm looking most forward to of the entire evening other than, than Daniel Bryan and, uh, and uh, Roman Reigns. So great stuff. I do expect we get a new Intercontinental Champion in Apollo Crews tomorrow night. Speaking of matches, where I think we're going to get a, a, a new champion, I, I, it, here we go. Women's Championship match. You're, you've got the tag team champions Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler defending against Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. I'm calling for a title change here. Um, I know a lot. Uh, they need to kind of build the, the, the kind of the uh, tension between Sasha and Bianca, and they've only got a couple weeks to really continue to do that. But I could see a scenario where they win the tag titles, and I'll steal an idea that I heard. Um, on the F4W message boards. I'll, I'm going to I'm gonna talk about them again a little later on, but somebody had a, a great idea that Sasha and Bianca win the Tag Team Championship. On the first night at WrestleMania, they defend the Tag Team Championships, and then the next night at WrestleMania, they face each other, uh, either in the main event or a feature match on that show. I could definitely see that happening, uh, but I think that they, it would be a, lot, a little bit of an added intrigue there. They've done the tag partners with the tag titles going against each other, the opponents of WrestleMania going against the winning the tag titles on the road to WrestleMania in the past, and it would not shock me if we have new champs tomorrow night in Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Continuing down there, Riddle defending his U.S. Championship against 
Ali, I feel like there's got to be another uh, title change here. I'd hate to do it because I think Riddle just got the U.S. Championship. I think he's building some momentum. But if they don't give Ali something here, they've got to give the guy something, right? I mean, I, I have a little, little pause because I really thought the way they were going with this was Ali going up against Kofi Kingston. I thought that made the most sense. That was a match I was really looking forward to them putting together for WrestleMania. Clearly, that's not the way they're going, though, because they've already announced it's going to be Kofi and Xavier Woods defending the tag championships against Omis and uh, AJ Styles at WrestleMania. So that's not the direction they're going. But I think Ali's got to get the title tomorrow. They've got to give the guy something. They've given him nothing since he's taken over as the Retribution leader. Um, this match, though, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. I think it's going to be really great stuff. And uh, I'm really I'm, I'm, well, we're looking forward to this one. I think it should be really good. Continuing along there now, you've got Drew McIntyre, the number one contender, going against Sheamus. I'd love a scenario where Sheamus gets the win here. I think Sheamus has been doing some of his greatest work. You know, obviously, I've got the Irish pride behind me, and I just, uh, you know, nothing like that big bruiser Sheamus. Think about the idea that the guy is, is you know, wrestling and doing this entire run here with an injury is uh, incredible. Uh, he's, you know, he's been honest and open about having spinal stenosis, and he's been absolutely killing it. I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about Sheamus. Um, I'd love for him to get the win here. It just wouldn't make any sense. This is a showcase for Drew McIntyre. He's going to WrestleMania. He's the guy in the main event. And I think he gets a pretty decisive victory over Sheamus. Uh, but these guys have been brawling, man. They've been having some really good matches on Raw. Been loving what I've seen from them. And I'd be really excited to, to see this match uh, tomorrow night. And I do expect, though, that Drew McIntyre gets the win as he needs to look strong for Bobby Lashley. Unless Lashley gets involved. And I think that is an option. I think that could happen. Uh, but I do like my scenario there of Drew McIntyre getting a hard-fought victory. Sheamus finally embracing his best friend once more. Saying, hey, you know what? You're the better man. I'm going to be in your corner at WrestleMania. And uh, that's the, the spot for Sheamus on the card at WrestleMania is in Drew McIntyre's corner as he goes against Lashley, who will have, obviously, MVP and probably the Hurt Business in his corner. So really good stuff. Uh, I'm excited for this match, though. All right, and then the main event, it's going to be Daniel Bryan going against Roman Reigns with Edge as a special, I guess, the enforcer or the referee, or he's involved. So uh, I'm excited for this one. This match is going to be awesome. It's going to be incredible. Uh, there's a thought that I heard, and I, I can't take credit for it. It was over on the F4W message boards where someone had said, uh, wouldn't it be something if Daniel Bryan uh, either wins the title or gets screwed by Edge somehow? And then on the first night of WrestleMania, you've got Daniel Bryan versus Edge with the winner of that match going against Roman Reigns. Uh, on the next night, so it kind of you have your double WrestleMania mate kind of shows there where the first night would really be leading a lot to the second night. Um, so that'd be a fun scenario. Uh, I just feel like Daniel Bryan, I'd love to see him get involved in this match. I'm a little nervous because we've seen that, uh, you know, spoiler alert here. So if you got to turn this off, go ahead and do it. Give me a second. Yeah. All right. You've been more. On uh, Twitter earlier, it was announced, or somebody, I guess, had a screenshot of what it was on the WWE Network, a snafu, showing that Daniel Bryan is going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year. No announcement has been set. There hasn't been anything there. You know, you keep it locked here to watch along wrestling. I'll jump in my car, suit and tie and all. I don't care to give you guys that update. But um, that being said, I think uh, with that announcement, it does give me pause. Does that announcement mean that Daniel Bryan loses tomorrow night and then announces his retirement? Uh, we've all heard the rumors that Daniel Bryan's contract's up this year and uh, doesn't plan on renewing. So that's a possibility, but I'm hoping that that's not the case because honestly, I think this main event at WrestleMania needs Daniel Bryan. I think that it adds a lot to this main event. I think this would be a lot of fun to have him involved there. Don't get me wrong, I think Edge and Roman are gonna have a good match, but I think adding Daniel Bryan into that match, making that three-way is just, it would be great. And uh, I don't know how you get there. I honestly don't take the title off Roman Reigns, at least not now. I think him going into WrestleMania as champion is where it should be. Uh, but what I could think is maybe with Edge involved here, he kind of cost Daniel Bryan the match, or uh, he does something there where accidentally he cost Daniel Bryan the match, and then that adds Daniel Bryan into the match at WrestleMania. Or, or the scenario heard in F4W boards, where they, you know, Daniel Bryan and Edge have a match on the first night of WrestleMania going into the second night. So I don't know where they're going to go, but that, that's the, the fun here on the road to WrestleMania is kind of figuring out and pinpointing all the little pieces as to where they go. But... Should be an awesome night of wrestling tomorrow night at Fastlane. To recap my, my thoughts here, I think uh, Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman, I think you're getting a no contest there, or you're getting some sort of shenanigans that leads to Shane winning, because you're going to get your main event. Are those guys rematching at WrestleMania. Uh, Randy Orton and Alexa Bliss, I again expect another no contest. I got a ton of no contests tomorrow. Jeez, don't put me in charge of the booking. Uh, you've got Daniel, uh, you've got, uh, I don't think Randy Orton and Alexa Bliss have any sort of match. This just reintroduces the theme for WrestleMania. You've also got, I think, a brand new U.S. champion in Ali. 
a brand new Intercontinental Champion in Apollo Crews, brand new Tag Team Champions, three title changes on Fastlane 2021, what am I doing? The brand new Tag Team Champions in Bianca Belair and uh, Sasha Banks. I think that you have Drew McIntyre looking strong and going over Sheamus. And then obviously in the main event, you also then have, in my opinion, I think you have Roman Reigns retaining, but I don't think that's the last that we see of Daniel Bryan uh, on his way toward WrestleMania. Oh, and then Shinsuke. I think Shinsuke gets the win over Rollins, setting up Rollins and Cesaro for WrestleMania. So those are my thoughts on the show. I'm excited about this one, guys. I think this show is going to be a sleeper. I think don't, don't, don't skip this one. I think you guys will enjoy it. And uh, I'm going to enjoy it. And hopefully I'll be on with you guys afterwards to break everything down and talk about everything we saw. So until next time, everybody, leave a big thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.